Hi LEGO fans, I'm super excited to have another one of the second wave LEGO Ninjago movie sets. So today I'm going to unbox, speed build and review set number 70631 Garmadon's Volcano Lair with 521 pieces. It's a middle of the range set, so if you want to buy this, it's going to set you back about $50. And you can buy it at just about any store that sells Lego. In classic Bond villain style, Garmadon chose to create his secret lair inside of a volcano. So what we're getting here is a volcano based playset with five minifigures. We've got Zane, Garmadon, General Number One, Four Eyes and Steve. Lego have produced some very cool sets for the Ninjago movie, and this is no exception. It looks very, very good on the box. It's also a very good size considering the 521 piece part count. This thing is 10 inches high, 12 inches wide, and six inches deep. A few things about this set immediately caught my eye. The first one being the large shark element. The second being all of the translucent orange used for the lava flow. And the third is the awesome Steve minifigure. I really like the hair and the beard all over the face. Before we open up the box, let's flip it over and take a look, see what this set does. It doesn't look like we've got a ton of interactive features here, but we do have a mechanism to launch minifigures from the top of the volcano, just like the movie. We've also got the GIT lab with multiple computers and the obligatory coffee machine. Garmadon has his own throne room at the top of the volcano, complete with teapot and a selection of weapons. We've also got a secret breakaway door and this cool looking crane. Let's open up this box and see what we've got inside. Here's everything that comes inside the box. We've got five numbered bags of Lego, an instruction manual, and the dreaded sticker sheet. I'm gonna go ahead and get this built, and today we're gonna to do a 90 second speed build. And here's the completed build. This took me one hour and 40 minutes to put together and there were definitely some tricky parts to the build. In particular, I found aligning the three platforms in this set together a little bit tricky. Maybe I wasn't paying close enough attention and maybe I made one or two mistakes along the way. There's no doubt this is a very cool looking set and for the $50 price tag, it seems good value for money, but the devil is in the detail. So let's get in a little bit closer and see what this set has to offer. One thing I noticed on the box is that the set is always viewed from this angle. So I was curious to see what was on the back of the set and the answer is not very much. I was kind of expecting to see some large rock elements making up the outside of the volcano but this is very utilitarian and unfinished and that's okay considering the $50 price tag. You're probably not going to display it this way around but if you do you'll be able to see how the fish are given the illusion of swimming in the aquarium. The top of the volcano is a great place to start this review and you'll notice general number one is up here awaiting his fate. Garmadon is not known for taking the failure of his shark army generals lightly and any failures are usually punished by firing the general out of the top of the volcano. We have a mechanism in this playset for doing just that and you'll notice there's a large black gear on the side. Turning that gear results in some pretty spectacular action.
Inside the top of the volcano is a lever mechanism attached to the big black gear. We've also got this round element which snaps into place. Because we've attached the round plate quite firmly to the top of the volcano, activating the mechanism releases some pressure. Let's put our Shark Army General back in there and give it another go. This is great fun and it works really well. Starting at the top of the volcano and running all the way down the side is this very cool transparent orange lava flow. One element that's quite unusual and would be of particular interest to collectors is this large orange transparent curved piece. It's a shame that's stickered instead of printed. And to be honest, I think the set would look just as effective without the stickering. Immediately below the crater is Garmadon's throne room, complete with large aquarium. I'm pretty sure the aquatic life of choice for evil megalomaniacs is sharks, but we don't have small shark elements. Even so, these fish look great, and I really like the way LEGO have given the illusion that they're swimming within the aquarium. The outside of the tank is a very nice transparent blue curved element. Garmadon keeps some weaponry within the throne room, including this golden katana, a metal spike and a psi. On the other side is a shelf and I think the green and brown object you see on there is actually his tea caddy. Garmadon certainly enjoys his tea and it's great to have this fantastic teapot element and a small cup. The table on which they sit is also at a very low level which is consistent for Japanese tea ceremonies. The throne room floor is a mesh element and the table is mounted on a little turntable. It doesn't actually do anything, it just enables the table to be inserted at that angle. Beneath the throne room we have Garmadon's face built into the set and for those of you who've been paying attention you may have noticed that I missed a piece so I'm just going to put that on there now. The face is not very obvious and you might have to view it from several different angles before you see it. Personally I think it looks best from above. Garmadon really values technology and keeps his technologists close at hand. Here you can see the GIT computer lab complete with Steve the technologist. There are a whole bunch of screens here keeping watch over every system in the volcano lair. And as all technologists and computer geeks need coffee, we've got our own coffee maker. In the lab we've also got this mini piranha mech prototype. That's a small version of the piranha mech that appears in set number 70629 Piranha Attack. I've not reviewed that yet, but it's coming soon. Beneath the computer lab is even more technology. We've got this clamshell drone complete with laser pointer. And if we remove the drone you can see he's got his own landing pad. You can also also see the blue base plates that the set is built upon which represent the ocean. This is the clamshell drone and it's great to get two of these blue grey clamshell elements, you don't see those very often. Now peering out from within are a pair of freaky eyes and some teeth and we can actually open that right up and see what's inside. We've got a couple of fins there on the side which are stickered pieces and if we fold down that clamshell again you can see on the, the head of the clamshell drone we've got this large laser and I believe that's going to be a laser pointer which seems to be one of Garmadon's favourite weapons. That is the clamshell drone. There's a platform on the other side of the volcano layer featuring this crane. As you can see it's currently being used to hold up a large shark element. I'm just going to undo the claws so we can take the shark out of the way and see everything else that's here. Here's a closer look at the shark, most of it is a large grey lump and on the front here we've got a removable piece which is printed with the eyes and you can see the uh, teeth moulding underneath. I'm just going to snap that back on. Now if we turn it upside down you can see there are some negative studs on the bottom so he should sit quite happily on a base plate if we need him to and that is a very nice thing. Not a lot of printing on here which you don't really need to be honest with a shark. I really like these claw elements, they're a good size and it gives us the ability to pick up all kinds of objects from shark sharks to minifigures. With the crane moved to one side you can see there's a workbench here with a number of elements on there including the components to build a flick missile. I've not seen anywhere on this set where you can actually fire the flick missile from but it's great to have the components and the instructions to build one. Beneath the platform we've got more blue base plates representing the ocean and this solid wall with a warning danger moving parts. You'll notice there's a mechanism on the side here with a large grey gear and turning that busts open the wall. I'm not certain what the wall is designed to do but I thought it would be fun to use it to release the shark. Viewed from the back you can see the wall mechanism is very simple and simply pops the wall off the two studs at the bottom. 
Taking a moment to reflect on the actual build of this set, it's easy to see why we've got such a large set with so few pieces. We've got quite a high number of very large elements, including these large black slopes, six of these yellow lattice wall pieces, and several tall grey lattice columns. The minifigure selection is pretty good for a $50 set. From left to right, we've got Garmadon, General Number 1, Steve, Four Eyes, and Zane the Nindroid. This is the Garmadon minifigure. I don't think we're getting anything new here. This is exactly the same minifigure we got in the Garmadon, Garmadon, Garmadon set, with the exception of the staff here. Now, even that is exactly the same as we got in one of the collectible minifigures when we got the Garmadon character in there. So, yeah, definitely nothing new today. Uh, the expression is the same expression that he had in the Garmadon, Garmadon, Garmadon set, but it is a nice minifigure. I really like the metallic detailing on the front there on the ceremonial armor. I love the headgear. He doesn't have a dual expression, just the one on the front. Uh, so a well-executed Garmadon. If you've not already got one of these, it will be a welcome addition to your collection. This is Shark Army General number one, and he is very well decorated in his dress uniform. Uh, let's just take that headgear off for a second, and you can see there are lots of gold metallic printed medals on there. We also have an awesome looking face. I really like those eyebrows. Now if we turn him over, just a little bit of detailing on the back and no alternate expression. So let's put this fantastic Shark Army head gear back on. It's a really nice piece, this. We've got metallic printing on the front. We've got some white printing there for the teeth and the eye on the side there is printed in black. So it's a really intricately printed Lego element. I really like that. Uh, also wearing these white gloves. Now, we have seen this guy before. We saw him in the collectible minifigure series and here he is after he got shot out of the volcano. So uh, we got a very nice before and after. I don't think we've seen this guy in any other set. So it's great to finally get the before and after versions. That's Shark Army General number one. This is Steve and without a shadow of a doubt, he's my favorite minifigure in this set. He is amazing. I really like the dual molded legs there with the white and the gray blue plastic. And then we've got full printing on the front there. So he's wearing a lab coat over a tie-dye t-shirt. And I like the way the printing continues down off the torso onto the pants. And then we've got this printing on the front here. He's just so cool. I also like the pen in the pocket that seems to be leaking blue ink onto his white lab coat. Printing on the back is minimal. It's got a little bit of detailing there for the, uh, the buckle at the back. And then we got this fantastic hair and beard piece in one. That is just so great. I like the way it's got a gap there so you can see the mouth poking through. Let's take this off. As you can see, he's got this expression on the front there, which is very cool. Turning him over, you've got another expression, which is a little bit more surprised. And I'm not sure what's going on with the eye there. Uh, looks like he's broken his glasses. And that is our Steve minifigure. We've got another minifig from the Shark Army, and this time this is Four Eyes. Uh, I believe that's what Garmadon calls him in the movie. He's got this fantastic headgear here, which is like a, um, I was gonna say a squid, but I think that's an octopus over his head. And I love the printed eyes on there. Obviously he's got his own eyes and the eyes on the headgear, hence his four eyes. Let's take that off. And he's got a great expression underneath. We've got those eyebrows once again. And then we've got the breathing apparatus here on his shoulder and some great printing on the front there. I think this is a pretty generic for Shark Army. And always nice to see metallic printing on these minifigures. But I think the star of the show here is the headgear. And that is, that's just phenomenal. It's this nice, soft, plasticky piece. And that is four eyes. Finally, we've got the white ninja and everybody's favorite nindroid, Zane, with his amazing blue eyes. He's wearing exactly the same outfit that we've seen in other Zane minifigures, and he comes with the same bow and arrow and quiver strung across his back. He's got this headgear, which is the two part and allows us to get to his face so we can see what his expression is on the front. I suspect at the back he will be smiling and yet yeah, there he is with a very toothy grin. And uh, yeah, definitely not an exclusive for this set, but if you've not got a Zane, he'll be a welcome addition to your collection.
So that was set number 70631, Garmadon's Volcano Lair from the Ninjago movie. I think it's clear LEGO will work into a specific price point for this set, but at $50 it is great value for money. Sure they could have easily made something much more spectacular with some more detailing around the back, but then the $50 price tag goes up. LEGO is a very expensive toy and I think it's commendable that the price has been kept down to keep this accessible to as many young builders as possible. It's not the strongest build and I think a great many of these will end up broken and made into other things. But that's okay, that's what LEGO is for. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing, speed build and review video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like down below and subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. I release two new LEGO review videos every single week, so you'll always find something new or something old to enjoy on my channel. Thanks for joining me today, stay safe and we'll see you on the next build video.